Well, Night School is a, is a prequel. It's set 20 years ago, which doesn't sound like a lot to me, but in terms of the kind of security threats that we face now, uh, the terrorist threats that we face now, we feel that we're pretty used to them, we know what we're doing, but 20 years ago it was all brand new and we had no idea what we were doing. And I think the security people were smart enough to understand that they didn't know. So there was this kind of panicky policy that where uh, they were just rushing around trying to deal with whatever needed dealing with without really seeing a coherent structure there. So I wanted to go back to when Reacher was in the army and he was involved in one of the very first of those operations where the, uh, the national security people are quite open about it. They say, we don't know what's going on. We're just running around with our hair on fire. And Reacher had to get involved with that. He had to go to Germany, to Hamburg, where there was this mysterious message had been overheard. The American wants a hundred million dollars. That was the only message they had. What American, what for, who was paying the hundred million? Um, so that's where it started and it, it ended up, I think just at the very beginning of the, the new terrorist threat reaches involved. I like, I'd like to take him back into the past every once in a while because it's a challenge for me as a writer. Instead of making him just a little bit older and wiser each year, he's got to go back and be that much younger and slightly dumber, maybe slightly more optimistic, maybe slightly more naive about things. So it's a good writing challenge and it also just changes it up. I, uh, I, I like to think of him when he was inside the structure. Not totally happy there, obviously a little friction going on, but basically he trusts the organization and he has to work with it. And uh, it just gives a whole different canvas really, a whole different style of storytelling and a whole different context for what's going on. He's not on his own, you know, he's part of a team. Yeah, I always like to revisit uh, the relationship between uh, Reacher and Nagley. Is, is a, there's so many classic pairings in, in crime fiction, you know, right back to Holmes and Watson, uh, right up to, you know, the modern day stuff that's on television, Morse and Lewis and, and all that kind of thing. I love the pairing. And so, yeah, it was fun to, to reintroduce her. But the thing about Nagley is you can't explain her too much. She, she's appealing because she's a mystery. So she just comes and goes and I don't say much about her. I think we will never really understand why she is like she is. Uh, I think it would sort of puncture the mystique a bit if we understood why. I think, uh, you know, Reacher would love to, to uh, change his lifestyle, except he can't, you know, that's his problem, that he, he just can't settle down. I think partly he would like to, but uh, his tragedy is that he just can't. And the sort of women that he's attracted to are intelligent women. And because they're intelligent, they know it's not going to work. And so he usually has three or four days of fun and then it's over. So that's Reacher's problem. He's perpetually wandering, hoping to settle down, but he never will. Well, I think 20 years ago in 96, Reacher was obviously younger. He was, uh, he was probably a little more optimistic, a little more trusting in the system. Uh, you know, not night and day, he's, he's uh, still a cynical, tough guy. But I think that he was more at home in an organization that he trusted. Um, now, of course, he's out, he's, he's on his own. He's a complete loner. So I think that in the past, we see a more sociable Reacher maybe and certainly more communicative. And in the current day stories, he is just uh, on his own, just one man against the world. Well, I th some of the research was about Hamburg, obviously, because it's a location I wasn't totally familiar with, but mostly it was about the, the weapon that, that is at the center of the story uh, that has gone missing. And um, I can't say too much about it without spoiling the story, but that required quite a lot of research and uh, some very bizarre uh, discoveries really. It's all true and um, nobody's going to believe it, but believe me it is, it's true. Gosh, that's a, that's a difficult question. My favorite scene in the book is probably towards the end where Reacher is having his final conversation with a guy called Dremler 
and uh, I'll leave the reader to discover what happens at, at the end of that conversation. But that was uh, this, you know, there's some substance in that conversation that it, it, it was really what Richard wanted to say to the world, and so I think that's probably the favourite bit. Of course, also the, where he, he takes down um, seven guys, one after the other, in a little courtyard behind a building. 